As we mentioned previously, DHIS2 is an application-based platform. The University of Oslo develops, again, about 30 core applications that we consider to be the minimal functionality that countries need to have DHIS2 serve as a national health management information system. All of the applications that the University of Oslo make are publicly available, free to use. The University of Oslo also develops what we call an app platform. These app platform is a library of components, resources, and tools that are generic and can be layered to produce our applications that we have in the core, but as well as third-party applications. Third-party applications are a big part of the DHIS2 ecosystem. The 30 core applications that the University of Oslo produce are not always suitable to every context. Many countries require specialized tools for different projects, different kinds of clinical services, different types of end users. And using the app platform, these third-party developers are able to produce their custom applications, and they're able to reuse that library of components, resources, and tools that we use for our core applications for their own applications as well. And so what that means is it becomes easier to maintain those apps over time for those third-party developers. The third-party applications are not always published. They could just be for one country. But we do see an increasingly number of third-party applications being made generic that could be used in any DHIS2 database and published on our app hub. They are also not always free to use. Different organizations have different approaches to sustaining these applications. Some of these applications could have a freemium model where they are free to use the base functionality, but any additional new functionality or services are at cost. Some of them may have additional add-on services that have costs as well, for example, hosting. So while the core of DHS2, those 30 generic applications are publicly available, free to use for anyone, are maintained over time, the third-party applications may not be. Many are, but some are not, and they have different ways in which they secure funding and resources to maintain the apps over time. One final note about the applications is, again, all of the applications are available on our app hub. Not just the third-party applications, but also the core applications that the University of Oslo developed. They're all available here on our app hub. And you can access the app hub through our website as well through any DHIS2 instance. A key component of the DHIS2 interoperability is its well-documented REST application programming interface, or API. Essentially, the API enables clear pathways of communication between DHIS2 and other external software or platforms. There are many examples of where DHIS2 is interoperating or communicating with third-party platforms. For example, national population registries, HR systems, as well as other specialized data capture tools, for example, ComCare, OpenMRS, and ODK. Many of these larger platforms, for example, ComCare, OpenMRS, and ODK, have fairly straightforward connections between DHIS2 via the REST API, because many of the projects that are using ComCare or ODK are also using DHIS2, or there is a requirement to communicate to DHIS2. One key point to make is integrations with DHIS2, situations at which software needs to be brought into DHIS2, must adapt the DHIS2 metadata configuration. And we do have some support for this, but the maintenance of the integration over time has to include the metadata updates that we are continuously making to DHIS2. We recommend for interoperability that users or projects looking to form some kind of connection between DHIS2 and another platform consider using a middleware system for example, OpenHIM, instead of 
hard coding bespoke integrations or interoperability. We see that many projects and countries struggled to maintain interoperability over time. And by using these middleware systems, you put off some of the maintenance of that interoperability to a, another platform, as opposed to having to maintain it internally over time. You can find more information about the ongoing work on integration and interoperability on our website, dhis2.org backslash interoperability. DHS2 is also a platform for innovation and collaboration. And here we want to make the point that many countries are doing very innovative things with DHS2. They are producing their own applications. They are putting DHS2 into domains and use cases that are unique and novel. And in those situations, what we strive to do is to bring back those innovations those insights that people are already pioneering around the world with DHIS2 back to the core. And when we say core, what we mean is the University of Oslo supported applications, our resources, our guidance, our training, so that insights that are made in one place can be shared globally and that everyone can benefit from everyone else's innovation and, and experience. We have two examples of that here on the screen. Starting on the left, we see a application that was developed in Sri Lanka to do contact tracing for COVID-19. So in this, you see that each pink dot represents a person who was tested positive for COVID. And the arrows are representing the contacts that that person has. This kind of what we call a network graph really makes it very easy to do contact tracing and mapping. This application was developed in Sri Lanka, but they developed it in such a way that it was generic and could be used for any country that needed to do contact tracing, initially for COVID, but for really now any disease. We on the core are also studying this use case and application to see how can we bring this type of network graph into the core analytics applications that we maintain. On the right side of the screen, we see a dashboard developed in Uganda for testing and contact tracing. This dashboard is a custom dashboard that is used in their operations and rapid response division in the Ministry of Health. This dashboard introduced a lot of new functionality new types of analytics that have not been available in the core dashboard application that the University of Oslo maintains. So HISP, Uganda, the developers of this dashboard, made this dashboard app in such a way that it is generic and can be used in any country. And we at the University of Oslo have also been studying this dashboard and bringing in some of the functionalities that introduced into our core dashboard app as well. A quick summary of this presentation. First, on the left, let's start with the HMIS characteristics. Again, an HMIS is a health management information system. It is used for routine health data for decision making. It needs to include data from many programs and sources. Again, this should include supply chain data, HR data, infrastructure data, as well as all of the health data, clinical service delivery data, disease surveillance data, anything coming from health facilities. It can contain both aggregate and individual data, as well as event data. And data is entered and used at multiple levels. So data can be entered at the lowest level, community health worker, village level. Data can be entered for individual patients in a village or a household. Data can be entered in aggregate at health facilities and on up the hierarchy. And data is used at all of those levels as well for decision making. And the use is extremely important, especially at the lowest levels, to help guide interventions, to help guide outreach campaigns and workflows for those who are actually on the ground interacting with patients, conducting health programs. Shifting now to the right side of our screen, we see that DHIS2 primary use case is that of an HMIS. 
DHIS2 as a platform, again, is highly generic and flexible and used in many other domains, such as education, agriculture, land use, organizational management. But the principal use case of DHIS2 has been and will will remain as a national health management information system. And DHIS2 is the world's largest platform serving as an HMIS. DHIS2 is able to capture various different data types, aggregate, tracker, and event data. And DHIS2 is able to capture that data as well as produce analytics from that data, both on web and mobile. DHIS2 is highly extensible, meaning that DHIS2 has the ability to be innovated on top of new apps produced for different use cases that require more custom functionality and services. And DHIS2 is highly interoperable via the REST API, connecting DHIS2 to other platforms and software. We consider DHIS2 to be a global innovation platform a place at which various countries can produce new innovations, new insights, and then they are able to share those innovations and insights around the world so that everyone using DHIS2 can benefit from everyone else who is doing new and novel things with DHIS2.